Making a bullet or some other kind of projectile is a little bit harder probably than some of the earlier ele game elements you've been using. Um, so it's worth starting with a, a game that where you just fire a single bullet and once it leaves the screen or hits something, it can be reused. Later on, you, if you look at the spawning and destroying section on the website, you'll see how to make hundreds of bullets flying everywhere, um, but I really suggest you start with just one bullet. Now, once again, with this uh, particular topic, I haven't put everything in main. I've made a separate file here for bullet, and I have th uh, four functions in here. I have an init bullet function, a fire bullet function, a move bullet function, and a draw bullet function. Now, none of these are going to run automatically by themselves. So in main, you'll see that they actually get called within these three functions that do get automatically run um, at different times. So for example, init bullet will get run when init runs at the start of the program once. Fire bullet and move bullet will actually run uh, 60 times a second because it's in the update function. And draw bullet will run however often the screen is redrawn depending on your computer. Let's have a look at some of these functions. So the bullet is being stored as an object. Now, just a reminder, an object you can think of is like a box full of variables. So this box contains the variables X, Y, speed, and active. Now, active just simply means whether the bullet is uh, currently on the screen, flying, potentially able to hit something. And I've simply just used zero and one for uh, zero means it's not active and one means it is active. You can use false and true as well for that situation, but the computer will just change them to zero and one anyway. So I've just used zero and one. Um, it makes you feel like a real programmer maybe if you do that. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, once we've created the bullet with some different uh, variables here. Uh, just a reminder, the X and the Y, the X refers to how far left and right of the center it is and the Y refers to how far up and down from the center it is. Um, so let's look at fire bullet. Now fire bullet runs once a second and it checks whether uh, the space key is pressed and it will only run if the bullet is not active. So you'll notice here, if I go to fire a bullet and then I fire again, it won't let me fire until the bullet is uh, not active anymore because if we take that out, here, what you'll notice is that, and with Micro Studio, you sometimes have to click three or four times for it to really refresh properly. You'll notice that whenever I press fire, it just stops the bullet doing whatever it's doing and returns it to the start, which is not what I want. I want it to get to the end. And so that's why here, I'll just control Z and put this back here. That's why I said, if the keyboard dot press dot space and not bullet dot active, then blah, 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 blah. So hopefully that makes sense, the and not, it's sort of like English, uh, but it's basically saying if this happens and also the bullet is not active. So that's how that works. Just a quick reminder here about keyboard dot press dot space. If you just say keyboard dot space, that checks whether space is being held down, but you don't want that because you don't uh, want to fire when it's being held down. You only want to fire on the initial press, which is why we have keyboard.press.space there. Okay. Now, what actually happens if those conditions are met? We want to fire the bullet. And what does that mean? Well, we set the bullet.x to player.x. So let's say the bullet's over here. We ship it across to player.x and we just move it 10 pixels forward so that it's roughly at the front of the spaceship here. Again, you might play around with that depending on uh, what your particular ship looks like, which direction you're firing, etc. Then we set bullet.y to be wherever player.y is. So if the bullet's up here, we bring it down to where the player is. And then we set bullet active to true or to one, up to you. Now, move the move bullet function, this runs every frame as well. And if the bullet is active, then my bullets only go across the screen to the right. So I'm just adding, adding bullet speed onto whatever bullet.x is. So the x position, let's say it's at zero here. Uh, the bullet speed 
is 10, so it's going to add 10 pixels on worth of distance onto bullet.x every frame. And then it's going to check here if bullet.x is greater than 200, the edge of the screen here is 178 in my orientation, so it lets it go off the screen a little bit. If, but if, when the bullet.x is greater than 200, it just sets bullet.active to zero, um, and then it simply waits out there um, for and the next fire firing to occur. Down here, it says draw bullet, and again, we're only drawing the bullet if it's active. So it says if bullet.active, then uh, create draw, sorry, screen.draw sprite, etc., etc., etc. Again, if you can't remember how to add all the things to draw sprite, you can simply click on the question mark here and it will show you uh, what you need to type for that. Uh, again, this is one of those that needs a lot of different moving parts. When you write your code, initially it probably won't work at all and you'll have to do some debugging. Um, so try and look through and see if there are any mistakes you can make. You can always print out values at different spots. And so for example, if move bullet is not working, you can say, oh, okay, maybe I'll print bullet.active and and now I can just check oops, to see whenever I fire here, you'll see that it go bullet.active goes to one. This is getting written every frame. So you can see there what's happening in the code. That's a really good uh, technique, but just be patient, get some help if you need it. And uh, hopefully you can get your bullets firing.